Good morning. It gives me immense pleasure to be here for my course that is aircraft stability and control. Today I am in lecture number 12 which discussed about the longitudinal control and also I am going to revise some previous topics. I am Dr. Y. D. Dibedi, professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, India and I will start these topics I, I will be covering that is calculation of trim angle of aircraft, calculation of elevated deflection, what do you mean by trim condition, how does elevator help in attaining trim condition. I will be discussing this. Before I go to the topic, I will go for a small revision in that it, it is a part of my monkey bath. So, I will start with my previous classes and what the physics we have learned. Also, we have derived the equations for wing contribution, tail contribution and neutral point, static margin and so many things we have already discussed. I want to go further and why we need this topic. Till now, we have discussed about the aircraft stability. Once we talk about aircraft stability, we are talking about the contribution of wing, tail, fuselage, engine, landing gear, etc. But once we are talking about the control, controller is intentionally deflected. The primary control of the aircraft are elevators, ailerons and rudder and sometimes we also include canard also. So I have to express here that in aircraft we have three primary axes in body axis system. One is the longitudinal axis, another is lateral axis and third one is vertical axis. If I talk about the longitudinal axis, I am just showing by the help of this aircraft. This is the aircraft. In this we have the three axis. One is the longitudinal axis which is passing from aircraft nose to aircraft tail via the center of gravity. That is called longitudinal axis. The second one is a lateral axis. Lateral axis is passing from wing tip to wing tip via center of gravity. The vertical axis in which yawing motion takes place, it is perpendicular to longitudinal axis and lateral axis and it is towards the ground. So, as of now in our this whole topics which we have covered, we have only covered about longitudinal motion. In longitudinal motion, we have the two forces that is vertical force and horizontal force. Vertical force you can say as a lift and the weight and the horizontal forces you can assume as a thrust and the drag and one moment that is the pitching moment. So in this out of six, we are handling three parameters that is the vertical forces, horizontal forces and motion in a lateral axis that is longitudinal motion. This only we are considering in our next module we will be going for the further remaining three that is the two moment and one force that we will be handling in our next course in, in our next module. Till now we have discussed about the basics of stability, the definition, types of stability, that is static stability and the dynamic stability. In static stability, we have covered the positive static stability, negative static stability, unstability and the neutral stability. 
we have also seen the configuration of in which condition the aircraft will be longitudinally stable. So to have the longitudinal stable, we should have CM alpha or DCM by D alpha less than zero or negative. So if the aerodynamic center is behind the center of gravity, so if you see that this is the center of gravity and behind here is your aerodynamic center. So the lift will act at the aerodynamic center and it will move nose down. So if aircraft is moving nose down, we can say that the aircraft is longitudinally stable. In this case, the CM will be negative or anti-clockwise direction. So we are in this condition, if nose is going down, the CM is negative and we say that aircraft is longitudinal static stability. We have also seen that to have the aircraft trim, we should have two conditions we have to meet. That is the CM naught should be greater than zero and CM alpha should be less than zero. So it should be positive value and this should be negative, negative value it should have. If I draw the plot between CM and alpha, so this is the CM and this is the alpha in this direction and in this direction positive. And if I take a cambered air file, our this thing will move like this. This is the plot of and this point is called the CM. Uh, trim. This point is called the trim. Trim is a point where net force and the net moment is zero. So if you see in this, the lift is equal to weight and CM is equal to zero. So these things, if all moments and the forces are equal, then we can say that it is a uh, trim condition. We have also seen the effect of wing and effect of tail, wing contribution and the tail contribution. We have already seen that how this angle IW, this is the wing setting angle is affecting and how this tail setting angle IT of the tail, it is affecting the aircraft stability. We have also seen that in, in tail, we have some downwards and this is going and here due to vertices, there is a angle, it is called epsilon and this epsilon is called the downwards angle and this downwards angle is generated. If here is, this is the V, infinity or V, so this down was will make the real, this is the V, but actual it will be V prime. This is the V prime and this angle is epsilon. So this epsilon angle is, and it is called the down was angle. And this down was is affecting the, this down was angle affecting the, tail flow and tail lift coefficient. Okay, so these parameters we have already completed and today in my previous class also I have discussed about the control and in this longitudinal control elevator is the primary elevator is the primary control primary control for longitudinal longitudinal motion. So elevator is always fixed with the tail and this I am drawing here again a this is the tail and at the tail we have one hinge. In hinge we are fixing this is the elevator here this is the elevator. Just I, I want to show in this aircraft. Okay, so here we have the aircraft 
this is the fuselage this is the wing this is the horizontal tail and this is the vertical tail or vertical fin if you see here the the controls these are the elevators elevators are fitted at the trailing edge of the horizontal tail so that the we have seen that lt the distance between aerodynamic center of the horizontal tail and the center of gravity is very important as it is trying to turn the aircraft with respect to the center of gravity that is why we put the horizontal tail far away behind from the center of gravity so that the size of this can be reduced and and so the weight of the aircraft is tremendously reduced by putting as far behind as much possible so here in today's lecture i am going to talk about the effect of uh, this elevators and how much deflection it is called delta e e for elevator so wherever uh, how much it should be plus or the minus that we are going to discuss in my next slides so here uh, this revision uh, this uh, how to get cl2 it is very important to understand that in a, in an aircraft the getting the cl trim is one of the uh, very crucial and this we can see here one plot the cm versus cl plot is here uh, initially at point 1 it is aircraft is trimmed in this case if you see we have positive cm not which is our requirement and also dcm by d alpha dcm by dcl is equal to less than 0 or negative so this is this plot is meeting our requirement but if I, if i want to trim the aircraft in other than one if i want to trim at two what will happen so th that is the i want to select a new trim because the the you have increased the velocity so we have to make the trim at a new point so how we are going to make the trim so this elevator is used to trim the aircraft so here if you see cl is equal to cl alpha into alpha plus cl delta e into delta e because this lift is a function of alpha angle of attack and elevator deflection so in a uh, this linear expansion of this we can make that by the taylor series cl is equal to cl not but we are not taking cl not because we are uh, assuming that cl not is a zero so here cl alpha into alpha plus cl delta e into delta d here cl not is equal to zero next case is cm cm is equal to cm not plus cm alpha into alpha plus cm delta e into delta e here we are taking the cm not because this cm not will exist for the as the coefficient of moment will exist that is cm ac so this cl is a function of alpha and delta e and cm is a function of also alpha and delta e if we expand the linearly cm at trim that is called the cm not and cl is equal to cl trim so we have to find out cl trim so this cl trim is equal to cl alpha and here alpha trim because we want to see this alpha at what angle of this is called angle of attack at alpha is equal to trim alpha So CL alpha into alpha trim plus CL delta e into delta e trim. So for the trim position, the moment will be zero. So this CM is equal to zero, and here CM not plus CM alpha into alpha trim plus CM delta e into delta trim. Our aim is to find out what is the CM delta e and CL trim. So we have to find. what cl is required for the trimming the aircraft for the new position and how much deflection of elevator is needed to get the cl trim at a new position so a simple mathematics so from that previous if 
I want to find alpha trim. So alpha trim is equal to CL trim minus CL delta E into delta E divided by CL alpha. If you if you see here the first one here, the so CL trim is equal to CL alpha into alpha trim plus CL delta E into delta trim. So I want to find this alpha trim. So this alpha trim is equal to this CL trim minus CL delta E minus delta E divided by CL alpha. This is same thing is done here. Now this alpha trim we have to put in the CM equation. So we know that it has become now delta E required or this is the delta E trim is equal to here if you see the this uh, CM naught divided by CM delta E plus CM alpha divided by CM delta E CL alpha minus CM alpha CL al delta E into CL trim. So we have put this for alpha trim we have put this value in the moment e equation. So delta E is equal to this is delta E naught plus this inside the bracket we can write as a d delta E by d CL trim and the, here is the CL trim. So here so here we have to find out that d delta E by d CL trim is equal to minus CM alpha divided by CM delta E CL alpha minus CM alpha into CL delta E and d delta E naught is equal to CM naught divided by CM delta naught. I think it is very much clear a simple mathematics is here. So how much elevator deflection is required? This is our problem that if we want to deflect, so how much elevator deflection is required? So here d delta e by d c l trim how much and this we have seen that minus c m alpha divided by c m delta e into c l alpha minus c m alpha c l delta e this both are very very small we have neglected this term so we can write here equivalent that is the approximation d delta e by d c l trim is equal to minus c m alpha divided by c m delta e into c l alpha. So here this we can write as a minus cm alpha by cl alpha divided by cm delta e. So this cm alpha is equal divided by cl alpha we can write dcm by dcl into cm delta e and dcm by dcl we know very well that it is a static margin we have learned in our previous class. So d delta e by dcl trim is equal to minus dcm by dcl divided by cm delta e is equal to minus sm divided by cm delta e. So here we got that this deflection with respect per unit cl trim it should be minus sm by cm delta e. So d delta e by d cl trim is equal to minus sm is equal to x bar n p minus x bar cg divided by cm delta e is x cg if x cg is equal to x and p at least both are in the same point so this will be zero and there will not be any deflection and aircraft will be in neutral position so this d delta e by d cl trim is gives the handling quality of the pilot with how nicely aircraft is handled and how he will get the feel of the aircraft how to uh, fly the aircraft. So now further I am coming in my previous uh, equation that delta E is equal to delta E naught plus D delta E by D CL trim into CL trim. Here D delta E into and CL trim putting all we get the feel. You see if delta E is equal to 0 0.5 he will get some feel of CL, okay, maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, like this. Pilot will get feel by deflection of the elevator and he will feel in his hand that how much CL is experienced by the aircraft. So this delta E by DCL 
trim is a handling quality and now from stability we have started from stability we have gone to the control now from the control we have gone to the handling quality of the aircraft so what is our learning in this we should understand to say that in our cruise flight the thrust required minimum we have learned in our previous class that thrust required t t required minimum is equal to under root c d not by k okay so this k is a constant and c d not is a coefficient of drag at zero angle of attack this we have seen our previous aircraft performance or flight mechanics course and now again i am here again a, a simple thought that if we are flying the aircraft at some climb angle so here the flight path angle this is the aircraft this you can see and here this is the horizontal from the horizontal you have gamma as a flight path angle if you see here in this condition if it is the cruise flight here just you see aircraft is taking off from here to here from here to here is a climb from here to here is a cruise here is a loiter and then descent and then it is a landing so if your aircraft is here and if in this case if it is a cruise case l is equal to w but what will happen at the climb case climb case it will not be the same this lift will be equal to the w cos gamma and the value of cos gamma will be always less than 1 so the here the L is equal to W, so C L is equal to W by half rho v square. So C L crime is equal to W cos gamma by half rho v square, and C L at cruise at uh, uh, at cruise it will be less than it will be C L cruise will be W by half rho v square s. So this C L climb is less than C L cruise as W cos gamma is less than W. I think it is very much clear. And also, if you see, if the C L is less, the C D will be also less as C D I or induced drag is equal to K C L square. So if C L is less, the C D, the coefficient of induced drag of climb is also less than C D I cruise. So what is the uh, this summary or what is the result of this thing is that during the cruise flight the induced drag is less and thrust required is also less as the lift is countering less weight so this we have to take care and this is a part of our aircraft performance and now we have to see that how these things are implicated in stability and control implication for stability and control issue that cl climb the uh, cl climb and the cl cruise so cl cruise is cl climb is less than cl cruise we have seen so the positive moment to be nullified if you see here the initial we are here in the trim but if this is the the cruise but if you want to climb cl is less So if the cl is less this has to tune here so this much value so now the plot will go from here this much cm has to be nullified okay so to nullify this thing we need to deflect downwards delta i if you deflect downwards it will extra this thing will increase and it will try to move in this direction need to put elevator down so delta e here is equal to delta e not plus d delta e by dcl into cl trim and so delta e cruise is equal to d delta e not plus dcl cruise by dcl d, uh, delta e cruise by delta cl cruise into cl 
Purush, now what will be the delta E naught and delta E, delta CL extra? This we have to calculate. We need to recapitulate again that delta E, the total deflection of elevator is a sum of the delta E naught at 0 degree plus d delta E by d Cl into Cl trim. Here d delta E is equal to minus Cm naught by Cm delta E and d delta E by d Cl is equal to minus d Cm by d Cl by d Cm, uh, Cm delta E and where minus d Cm by d Cl is static margin. So static margin is very important. So I know that d E naught is equal to d delta E by d Cl and Cl trim so I can get delta E required. Now what is Cm naught and Cm delta E for steady flight? Let us see Cm naught, Cm delta E and Cl delta T. We have to discuss about this again to understand. So we know that first I will go for the Cm delta E, it is also called the elevator control power. So this Cm delta T is equal to dcm by dcl at equilibrium or cruise. So lift will be function of L is equal to F alpha into delta E. So this Cl will be also function of alpha and delta E. So and Cl is equal to Cl naught plus Cl alpha into alpha plus Cl delta E into delta E as mentioned. So here Cl alpha is equal to dcl by d alpha means partial derivative when Cl vary with respect to the uh, other things are constant. Here Cm delta e is dcm by dcl. Here this you can see that if you deflect the down, it is a positive and this positive will generate a lift force in this direction and uh, it will generate an anti-clockwise or minus coefficient of moment. So here sine of Cm delta E will be negative and this is called the elevator control power C and Cl delta is how much change in Cl by change in delta E. So how much here D delta Cl is changed by deflection of delta E. So this is called the Cl delta E. Now what is the Cm naught? We, uh, we are discussing from long time and every time this Cm naught getting some confusion and this Cm naught will be contributed from the wing, from the tail, from the other parts of the component and we want Cm naught is equal to positive. So add Cm, the coefficient of moment at alpha is equal to 0 as trim angle should be positive for positive angle of attack. So Cm naught plus should be generated automatically by the aircraft. So what we have to see that the Cm naught of the aircraft is equal to Cm naught of the wing plus Cm naught of the fuselage plus Cm naught of the tail. We know that Cm naught of the wing is equal to Cm AC plus XCL naught. This we have so many times we have discussed. Now Cm naught of the tail is equal to Cl alpha t Vh neta t Iw minus It minus epsilon naught. This we have to see. Let us come back to Cm naught of aircraft. Cm naught of the wing is equal to Cm AC plus X bar Cl naught. So now uh, CMACW is will be how much? It is less than negative. I have here CM not desired. So we can see that CM not of the wing is equal to CM of aircraft, CM AC of the wing plus X bar CL not. So here, what is the meaning of here? CM AC of the wing. Here this CM AC. And you, you know that this CMAC, if the CG is ahead, so this CMAC will also produce a negative. And here if you see X bar, 
So this lift CL0 will be produced here and this into this distance will give our X bar. So here the X bar is equal to XCG minus XAC. So if XCG is behind, XCG minus XAC will be negative and this will generate the in this clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction. So, uh, so CMAC of the wing, CMAC of the wing will you get negative value because it is in this direction. So, CM naught of the wing is equal to CMAC of the wing plus X bar CL naught. And what is this CL naught? This you can see if we draw a plot CL versus alpha. So, at alpha is equal to 0. So, CL naught CL at alpha is equal to 0 is called CL0 and this value here is this CL0. CL0 is always positive value. So this is the positive, this is the negative plus this is the positive and this value if this is the CG and this is the AC, the value of this delta L, this will be in this direction and this will be a CM will be negative. So, how just you can see here this is the X AC and this is the X CG. So, here X CG minus X AC. So, minus plus and here if you see if it is behind you will get again minus and this is the plus you will get minus plus minus is equal to minus. So, you are going to get the value of CM naught w is equal to negative. So, CM0, the wing, the contribution of wing towards the CM0 is most of the time is a negative and that is why we need a something, a other component which should try to balance the air, uh, this aircraft and that time we need the contribution of tail. So, this tail, we have to use a tail, that tail will try to make the CM0 as a positive. So, how it is happening? Just I can see here this is the wing and this is the tail. Here is the CG. So, if this is moving in this direction, so this has to make in this direction CM of tail. Okay, so th this will be balanced. In case the second case, if I see that the AC is ahead, this is the AC, this is the CG. So, here is this will be the moment in this direction. So, CM0 will be positive and also CM alpha is also positive. So, we need something here which can counter this, it will produce CM alpha T negative because this direction of this thing is in this. In this way, our tail is contributing to make the aircraft statically stable. Next topic, I will be covering the again for the control and demonstration of longitudinal control, change in lift due to elevator deflection, stability derivative of elevators calculation of elevator deflection to trim the airplane at a given condition of a CL. Uh, I hope this, uh, these are the references that NPTEL lecture of aircraft stability and control by Professor A.K. Ghos, IIT Kanpur and this I will be, uh, please you can refer. Any questions, if you have, you are welcome to ask. My email is yagyadatta.duvedi at the rate iare.ac.in. Thank you very much for the joining. Hope you have understood well. Please be tuned for my next lecture. Uh, it, these lectures are going to be very interesting and very fruitful. Thank you very much. I am ending here. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.